one thing was for sure. They both believe Sparks to be a total tool. Be an exciting contest which shows that divorced couples can still have fun together, right? Mythological hero Achilles. C. On the spot dice spin. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. One of my favorite things to look up on YouTube are mashups. Now, a mashup is when somebody takes two, three, four, or even 25 songs and makes something new out of it. One of my favorites is Rapture Riders, which is a mashup of Rapture by Blondie and Riders of the Storm by The Doors, and it's a really excellent song by itself. I also like DJ Earworm's United State of Pop, 2008 and 2011 are, one of my, are my absolute favorites of that. But when it comes to game show mashups, there really isn't that many. We did have mashup week on Let's Make a Deal on The Price is Right a few years ago, and it was some of the best episodes of the season for those two shows. But going back to 1983 on NBC, and we actually had a true game show mashup. Mark Goodson had his venerable match game, and joining him was Orion Productions and their newly acquired Hollywood Squares from Filmway's Presentations and Rhodes Productions. And the idea was to mash up the two and have it seamlessly come together. Unfortunately, though, like Frankenstein's monster, it was an experiment gone horribly, horribly wrong. I give you the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour. <laughs> The match game, Hollywood Square, Hour! Start from the match game, Hollywood Square, Hour! Gene Rayburn and John Bauman! The match game, Hollywood Square, Hour, was an interesting duck to say the least. On one hand, it was a grand return of two great formats done by one of the best producers of all time in Mark Goodson. On the other hand, it also goes to show how the show exemplifies the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And because Mark Goodson is the one producing it, guess which show got broke. For this induction, we're going to talk about both halves, and to start out, we got Match Game. We'll begin by asking Janet, who won the toss, to make her selection. B, please. All right. Match Game, as the Talking Heads put it, is the same as it ever was, at least when it got revived in 1973. Hosted by Gene Rayburn, two contestants try to match the answers of six celebrities to funny statements with a blank inside of it. I honestly don't need much to say about the Match Game part because it's just as good as it ever was. Sadly, you don't get the normal regular panelists of Brett, Charles, Fanny Flagg, or even Betty White, even though most of them showed up at different points in time during the show's nine-month run. What also didn't change was the match game portion's format. Well, mostly. The core of the main part was the same as Match Game PM, where the contestants had three chances to match as many stars as they can. The person who makes the most matches wins who goes on to play the champion in Hollywood Squares. Now, the one thing that did change from the original show was how they did the tiebreaker. Instead of having the contestants write down a response to the tiebreaking question, they just picked one of four possible answers identified by number. The contestants saw the answers, but the celeb didn't. After that, the celebs give verbal answers, and the first contestant to have their answer spoken wins. I'm fine with this tiebreaker as it's quicker than the original, and yet retain the spirit of the original tiebreaker. So, thumbs up indeed. So, that was the match game part, and it was actually pretty good. So, what about the Hollywood Squares part? Well, to be frank, it was god-awful. And I tried to come up with an apt comparison to this, and then I re-saw the premiere when Gene said this. Here we go, we welcome you one and all to the match game Hollywood Squares Hour. This is the marriage of two of your favorite TV games. So, knowing that this is a marriage of two formats into one show, the only thing I could come up with is the tagline and the intro from SummerSlam 1991. So because I'm a masochist. <clears throat> me, 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 me. 
<laughs> this is gonna be stupid. Gene Raymond and his very band of miscreants come back and give us the match game made in heaven. But then, nuptials turn to napalm as John Bauman, Mark Goodson, and a lazy writing staff come together to form the Triangle of Death and give us the Hollywood Squares made in hell. It's Summer Slam. <coughs> Jeez, how did Vince McMahon ever do this? <sighs> And now, John Bowman and the Hollywood Square. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome to the second half of the match game, Hollywood Square's Hour. All right, now we get to the meat of matter and why the show is here in Game Show Garbage, the Hollywood Square's portion. First of all, we get started with John Bauman. Before doing the show, he performed with Sha Na Na, was a regular on Match Game and Password Plus. Another key thing, he was the host of a short-lived game show called The Pop and Rocker Game. To be frank, Bauman was good there. The reason being is that his strength is in music, and Bauman doing a music-based game show made sense, and it worked. Sure, he wasn't the best host out there, but he was serviceable and kept the mood light and going well. Bauman doing anything else as a host is lost. And when you have a show like Hollywood Squares, when you have to have a firm grasp of driving the show, it just makes the proceedings that much more unbearable to sit through. For proof of this, check out the John Davidson version of Squares where Joan, Shadow, or Jim J. Bullock was hosting. That is excruciating television. But what absolutely ruins this experience is how Mark Goodson handled Hollywood Squares. In this version, the celebrity picked a square and instead of an open-ended question or a crazy true-false question, the celebrity is always asked a question that was multiple choice, leaving no room for any funny zingers to be given. I thought to myself, why would Goodson come up with that when it clashes with the spirit of the original show, which was a light-hearted affair with celebrities cracking wise? The only explanation I could find to this is that the writers of the show acquiesced to Mark Goodson's hatred for having any part of his show scripted, I did an either or format to appease him. Because of this, the celebs weren't brief with the material being used and weren't provided zingers for the questions, so the celebrities would sometimes struggle for an answer. Goodson tried to work around this by having comedians on the show, but the original version did this too, so it's a complete wash. While that was bad on its own, the format really wasn't that good either. Just like the original, if the contestant agrees or disagrees correctly, they get to square. Incorrectly, their opponent gets a square. But aside from that, it's kind of different. This time, each acquired square pays off at $25. This is something the UK version of the show did, and it was okay. What the UK version, or any other version of squares, didn't do is punish people for making squares too harshly. In every other version, if you were incorrect, your opponent would get the square, and in the case of the UK version, no cash was paid out because of it. In this version, this will get the cash for the square. But the unforgivable sin to me is this. In the case where an incorrect answer would give an opponent a win, that square would have to be earned by the opponent themselves. In this version, if you did mess up of a square, your opponent would get it, even if it counted for a win. I honestly don't get this. Giving your opponent the square is one thing, but to give your opponent a win is absurd. There's a reason why this wasn't on any other version. It was simply unfair. I say this because since the game is worth $100 and goes up by $100 each subsequent round, you can invariably give your opponent a sometimes insurmountable lead even after round two. Granted, the syndicated version played at $250 a game, and if you go down by two games, you're in a hole. But at least you can come back from that much easier than you can under this format. To me, it seems that either Mark Goodson never watched an episode of Hollywood Squares, or purposefully sabotage squares to make his show match game superior to that of the Heater Quigley property. I choose to go off the latter because if you had watched one episode of Hollywood Squares, you'll know that the pre-written zingers and briefing of the celebrities about the material so they could come up with bluffs help move the game along. Also, having an ace host and Peter Marshall help matters a lot. 
It was rumored that he was on the short list to host the show, but Bauman got the call for some strange reason. Anyway, most money when the bell rings wins the game and plays the super match. The super match is basically left unchanged where they pulled a recent studio audience and got their best response to a question. The one answer they gave the most off is worth a thousand dollars, second most is five hundred, third most is two fifty. As before, three celebrities are called and the champ can choose one of the answers or come up with one of their own. Whatever they want in the super match can be turned into huge dollars with the head to head match. In this version, the nine celebrities have a secret multiplier in front of them. Four of them have a multiplier of 10, four have 20, and one has a big 30. For example, if the contestant won $1,000 in the super match and picked a star worth of 20, they'd play for $20,000. As with prior versions, it must be an exact match. It also proves an earlier point that Goodson didn't care about making a good version of Squares to go off match game. And that's my biggest problem with the show. Half of the show was so good, whereas the other half of the show was complete trash. It's the reason why I even thought about putting the show on the site and with the viewer's choice poll, you thought the same way. Even though the show did so many special weeks such as a tribute to the 50s, a leave it to Beaver Week, and other weeks dedicated to various soaps, the show was cancelled after 9 months. It's bittersweet as this would be Gene's last go around with Match Game. You can tell he loved doing that portion, even during this version of it. Both shows be revived after this disaster, though, which is good. Hollywood Squares got revived in 1986 with John Davidson. It was a fine version and was the version that I grew up with watching the reruns on the USA Network when I got home from school. Match Game's next revival was in 1990 with Ross Schaefer as host, which is one of my favorite revivals because of the theme, and I enjoy a matchup as a speed-up round to uh, bolster one's score. So, at the end of the day, at least something good came from this dire, dire show. Before I go, I kind of want to apologize to everyone for not having much content this month as I did in subsequent months. I've been having both right arm problems and tooth problems for the, over the past month, and sometimes I just get tired and lethargic, and I just can't think of words to type out when it comes to making a script or when it comes to writing a commentary and stuff like that. So I apologize for the lack of content this month. Hopefully May will be a much better month. I'd like to thank you for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.